Hello everyone. So once we are done with the clock net shielding, the next step is to do a quick timing analysis with the real clocks. Since now we have the clock tree in place, so it, everything the timing will change and everything seems to change over here because we are introducing a new logic over here which was not present as a part of your net list. Okay. So with this new logic introduced, it makes it makes sense to do an a round of timing over here to check what is the current timing scenario. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take this. Let's say we take this particular data path. Okay, and the com uh, we, uh, we had already uh, timed this particular data path. Basically, we had found the combinational uh, logic delay for this particular data path, which was theta. Next step is to find out the launch clock network delay, the capture clock network delay, and adjust these equations as per the launch and capture clock network delay. Okay, so in this case, we have noted down over here delta two is the capture clock network delay. Delta 1 is the launch clock network delay. So Delta 1 looks like this. It's the real wire RC delay of this particular wire plus the buffer delay plus the real wire RC delay plus again this buffer delay and so on. It will go till the flip flop one clock end point. Similarly for Delta 2, it is the real wire RC delay plus the buffer delay plus next the real wire RC delay and so on. It will go till flip flop 2. And in, in the combinational delay part, you have this you have this clock to queue delay of flip flop one. You have the estimated wire delay. It's not the real wire delay. It's the estimated wire delay. You have the delay of this particular uh, logic one. You have an estimated wire delay between one and two. You have the real delay of two. You have the estimated wire delay of two and flip flop two. Okay. So combinational delay will be still consisting of the estimated parasitics clock network delay delta 1 and delta 2 will be the real parasitic delay so once the clock tree is built it's never touched in the it, it's never touched in further optimization stage so that's why it, it, it does make sense to do a an amount of uh, uh, timing analysis at the clock tree synthesis stage okay so the uh, so the defining equations for setup becomes something like this your combinational delay plus launch clock network delay is should be less than the should be less than the clock period plus the capture clock net network delay minus the setup time minus the setup uncertainty. So everything remains the same as as in case of the uh, timing uh, uh, timing optimization or timing analysis that we did for placement stage except that there are two new terms that gets added. One is the delta 1 and delta 2 that is the launch clock network delay and capture clock network delay. So we have talked about this defining equations and how do we derive this equation a lot in, in, the, in the clock tree synthesis videos. You might want to have a look into those videos. So the next step after we did a quick timing analysis of the, of the uh, clock tree synthesis next next step is to is to route the design okay so we'll go with the route and in this case route now we will be actually getting access to real uh, real wires so it, the route looks something like this so basically now the wire there is no more estimated wire there is this is a real wire wire that we see over here this is again a real wire that we see over here and these routes are based on the connectivity from the netlist Okay, so once we route this particular design, you uh, you see that D in three is connected to flip flop one based on the netlist connectivity. Okay, so you need to route the design and you need to maintain the uh, maintain the existing timing scenario. For example, we did a timing analysis in the previous stage in the in the clock tree synthesis stage. The route stage should make sure that while you route the design, we should not be we should not be deteriorating the existing timing scenario we should not get get worse than that if we can improve it we can improve but we should not be going worse than that that's the that's the uh, function of the timing of the of the of the routing engine okay so what so by by that what we mean is for example there was a timing scenario from flip flop 1 to flip flop 2 with the help of this clock tree so the current timing so the current route route engine will make sure that the timing scenario during the cts stage is not deteriorated that's how the route has to be Else, what can go wrong? Let's say D in one to flip flop one. There is this route. Due to some reasons, if it routes in 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 a different fashion, the complete wire estimated delay, the complete delay of this particular wire that we had estimated, will not become true. Again, the same case for let's say the delay from two to flip flop two. If this route was not straight, but it went somewhere over here and then in then it came back to a flip flop two, we had uh, the estimated wire delay that we had done that might not match with the exact route delay. So it, it becomes a very necessary step for the router to make sure that the existing timing scenario or existing timing uh, uh, timing is not disturbed while we do routes. Okay, so this we will talk about we'll talk a lot about route in the upcoming sections where we that section is completely dedicated to route. This is the overview of it. 
next step after the route is to clean up the DRC so DRC are design rule checks so for example while routing we see some uh, some uh, placement uh, we, we see some spacing or shots for example if you look this area this particular circle uh, whatever is ha has been encircled over here if you look into this area these two routes are much closer to each other so it might lead to a lot of coupling and it might not even be able to fabricate able to get fabricated by a by a lab by a foundry so finally this this design has to go to a foundry to get fabricated and foundry have their own have their own rules for example one rule what it says is the minimum spacing between two wires should not be should not be some x micrometer okay in this case if it crosses x micrometer for example let's say it it should not just a, an example if it if the foundry says if the rule says that between two different routes the minimum distance should be 10 micron for example and over here if the distance is 5 micron this will be flagged as a drc violation and it's called design rule check violation so similarly there is a sh if you see this wire is going is going through this wire so there is a short over here so the signal which is supposed to go from flip flop 1 to 1 it might interact with this particular with this particular net which is going to flip flop 2 to buffer so so this should not happen because it's actually short circuiting your design so these kind of checks are done in this particular stage which is called drc clean and we'll be talking a lot about drc clean in a in, in a separate section in the existing course this is an overview of it so th this is what we did this is what we do finally when we try to do a drc clean and there are other problems while we try to do drc clean for example there had been uh, for example with the existing route there had been a timing estimation that had been done but due to due to the drc clean step the routes might just move somewhere in other places and the wire estimation will change and as a result of that the timing will change so we'll talk about all this in in the drc in the drc step this is an overview so we have to do this step after we after we do a route okay so next after we after we have done with the drc cleaning the next step is to do a complete parasitic extraction okay by complete parasitic extractions because we have now the data path routes we now have the clock routes we have the shields and we have everything in place so it does make sense at this stage to do a full parasitic extraction so the the uh, the scenario or the 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 way it will look like the way it will look is something like this so the complete chip it will be the uh, the resistance and capacitance of the entire chip will be extracted through some mechanism they will be extracted the all the routes and everything will be extracted and now you do a final round of timing analysis with the extracted spec so there is now no more estimation wire estimation now we have real wires we, we have real parasitics with that we need to do a timing analysis and we do a timing analysis which is the final timing analysis and and the way and the and, and the things that the final uh, timing analysis looks are into the real clocks the real clock wires the real data path wires okay so your timing equation will look something like this for example if we do a timing analysis for flip flop 1 to flip flop 2 the uh, the the launch clock network delay remains the same the capture clock network delay remains the same now your combinational delay which is from flip flop 1 to flip flop 2 through this combinational logic it will now have a real wire a real wire delay rather than the estimated wire delay what we have been doing till now okay so your defining equations will look something like this you have your combinational delay plus your RC wire it is this is now the real wire delays between flip flop 1 to 1 1 to 2 2 to flip flop 2 and plus the remaining equations remains the same okay so this is the final fi final step of uh, final stage of the of the uh, physical design flow there are again some intermediate steps like which are which are specifically industry oriented we'll be talking about them when we will be going into further sections so these these were the these were the uh, few steps which will give you an overview of physical design flow from next lecture onwards we'll be taking one step and we'll be trying to explain them in more detail for example uh, let's say define width and height of core and die in the next set of videos we'll be talking about how do we come up with the with the width and height of the core and die what is the utilization factor what is the aspect ratio we'll will come up with this we'll will start coming up with this particular terms and we'll also go into detailed uh, detailed lectures for each and every step of the physical design flow from the next video thank you